Hello, this is Jake Abbott. In this video, we're going to be talking about feedback from estimated states. This presumes that you've watched and understood the videos on state feedback and from and on state observers. And this is really about putting these two results together. So um, we had two fundamental results in state-based controls that we've addressed just recently in recent videos, and they are these. So we're starting with our system x dot is equal to ax plus bu and y is equal to c times x and we said that if we choose this is from state feedback if we choose u equal to some reference minus a gain matrix k times our state vector x then that will result in this new system x dot is equal to a minus bk x and we can basically make the eigenvalues of this new system be anything that we want through this state feedback regime uh, so we can stabilize the system and we can make its time response what we want but this method does presume that we have the ability to know our full state vector x now in general that might not be true so we talked about making a state observer and a state observer is a is a simulation of our actual system because we have a model of A and we have a model of B and so we're going to run this simulation in parallel to our actual system and we're going to give it whatever input we give our actual system we're going to give to our observer and we're going to have these estimated states which are a copy of our state vector evolving in time but because it's a simulation we have full access to this x hat vector and so we can utilize it and we said this observer alone isn't going to sort of correct for any errors in the in the model and in the initial estimate of the initial state so we created a closed loop observer which is we take this and we add an additional input which is some um, matrix of gains L times our error between our Y which we actually measure and our estimated Y um, that's coming out of our observer where Y is just equal to C times X hat which we have full access to X hat so using this closed loop observer, we got this new system that effectively describes the dynamics of our observer, which is x hat dot is equal to a minus lc times x hat. And then we have two really kind of two exogenous inputs, our input u and our output of our real system, which is y, becomes an input to our observer. And again, we found that through choices of our gain matrix L, we can make the eigenvalues of this observer be whatever we want. So we can make it be stable and we can make it have the time response we want. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, we want to fundamentally implement this control algorithm using feedback from estimated states, but we don't know our estimated states. So the question is, can we instead try U equals R minus K times X hat? Uh, it seems like a reasonable thing to do. We know that x hat is going to be wrong for some period of time, but we know, because we have this closed loop observer result, we know that x hat will be, will have the dynamics that we want. So after some period of time, x hat will become more and more and more accurate, and eventually x hat is going to look very much like x. Um, it isn't clear if this result that we have that we can create closed loop. Uh, any closed loop system we want, which was based on having perfect state knowledge, it isn't clear if that's going to hold true anymore. So that's what we want to try out. And so, and so to do this, we're going to effectively have our system, which is our plant. This is our actual A and B matrices, and we're going to give that system our input, which is varying in time, and out of that system is going to come our output Y. And then we're going to have our observer that is a simulation that we're going to run in parallel and whatever we give whatever input we give to our for our actual plant we're going to give to our observer as well and we're also going to measure our, our real system output y and we're going to feed that to our observer and out of our observer is going to come our estimated state vector and because it's um, all in software we have full knowledge of it and then we're going to pass that estimated state vector now through k and we are going to have our input r and we are going to sum r minus k times x hat 
and that is going to be our U. So this is the basic uh, control scheme that we're proposing and, and this is actually how it would be implemented if you think about how this is being implemented. We have a physical plant we can't, you, you see we never see its states because we don't have access to its states, we just have access to its output. So it's, we're never utilizing our actual x vector anywhere here. We give an input to our plant and our plant's output moves. Our observer takes those two inputs in and spits out a full state vector for us to use in our control system that we're going to feed to our real physical plant. So when we couple all of our equations together in this form, what we get is we get a new, so we have a bunch of state vectors. We have our original n state vectors and then we have our new n estimated state vectors. So we've doubled our state vector. So we have our full x and we have our full x hat that are going to evolve. So now we have a 2n state matrix. Uh, excuse me, that's an equal sign. And when we actually do this, we get an a in this spot. We get an lc in this spot. In the lower right, we get an A minus LC minus BK. And in the upper right spot, we get A minus BK times our new state vector, our combined state vector. And then our new B matrix looks like B, B, and R. And then our Y, which is our real system output, is just held by what the definition of y was to begin with, so it's just equal to c times x. Okay, so this is the, the closed loop system where we have now uh, taken our observer outputs and we've used them in our state feedback. And when we look at this equation, we start looking at this matrix and, and thinking, you know, could we set the eigenvalues of this new big 2n by 2n a matrix to whatever we want and you go okay well I can't affect this term here this is just an a but I have the ability to affect this term through k and I have the ability to affect this term through l and both k and l affect this term and and it looks like it's possible uh, it you don't it isn't obvious how one would do it but it looks like it's possible that we might be able to control the eigenvalues of this system through our matrix uh, gains of from k and l but it, it just isn't obvious in this form so as we start thinking about this, we think, well, what are we, what are we interested in doing here? Well, we're interested in controlling the dynamics of our real system. So we're interested in this, this, uh, the states x, and we're not so much interested in the dynamics of the, of the observer per se, but we're interested in the error between the observer and the and the actual states. We'd like, we'd like the that error to be small. So if we consider a new a new state vector, say we're actually more interested in x and error than we are in x and x hat. And error is is simply going to be defined as the difference between x and x hat. So we're more interested in this state vector than we are in the original state vector. So let's do a, a uh, transformation, an equivalence transformation, and transform our system into this new system. So if we want to do that and we say what's the transformation that would transform x and x hat into x and error, sorry that's a hat, into x and error you start looking at it and you say well that's just an identity here and then you say it's an identity and a minus identity here and we call that our we call that a big P matrix and then you know we can actually find P inverse really easily and and what we get is we end up getting this new system now where we have this new state vector, x dot and error dot, and we get a minus bk here, we get a 0 here, we get a minus lc here, and we get a bk here. Our states are x and error, and then we get a b and a 0 here. This comes out of this transformation, and then our y, again, because our states are x and error, we look at our original definition of what y is, and it's just equal to c times x. So, through this transformation, we found an equivalent system. Now, it's an equivalence transformation, so the eigenvalues of this new big A matrix are the same as the eigenvalues of the original system. We're just looking at it with respect to different variables. and we look at this closely and realize we have just come upon a very 
a very, very amazing, significant result. We look at this system, and let's look at this error, this error system. I have the E dot is equal to A minus LC times E, and the input doesn't affect it at all. So by choosing my gains L, I can make the eigenvalues of this error system be whatever I want. That was a result from the observer, um, from the observe, observer video. And the inputs don't affect it at all. So we have this, this autonomous system that's unaffected by any forcing. If I start with some sort of initial error between my estimated state and my, and my real state, that error is going to decay away asymptotically, and we control the rate of that decay by setting the eigenvalues of A minus LC. So I have this little error system that regardless of what this other system from the top row is doing, my error system starts with some initial error and decays away to zero in a known period of time that I control. And, and that is just going to happen regardless of what input I give it, regardless of what my real physical system does. And then I look at my real physical system and my real physical system x dot is equal to a minus bk times x, which is this idealized controller system that we wanted plus b times r, and then there's going to be this other term here, bk times error. And so when there is error, in the beginning of the problem there's some little error, and so our real physical system isn't going to behave exactly like the idealized system because there's going to be some error. And so that error is going to enter in through b times k. But because our error system is fully decoupled, our error is decaying away to zero. So yes, the error does affect our system in those first um, couple of time constants while it exists, so our system isn't going to behave exactly like the idealized system we designed, A minus BK, for the first few time constants, but after four or five time constants of our error system, this error term goes away, and even though this BK term is still here, it's BK times effectively zero. So we've made a system now that's fully decoupled the error system evolves to zero by itself. The state system uses those errors, but after four or five time constants of the error system, those errors go away, and we now have our system converged on this idealized A minus BK system that we designed in the first place. And because this A matrix is block upper triangular, because of this zero, we realize that the, the combined eigenvalues of our full closed loop system, there are two N, 2n of these eigenvalues. The combined eigenvalues are simply the eigenvalues of a minus lc and the eigenvalues of a minus bk because of this block upper triangular structure. So we have this amazing powerful result that in some ways is sort of the the main most important result of this of this course which is that we can design closed loop controllers using state feedback. We can design an observer that that estimates our states and we can use those estimates in that closed loop state feedback and the combined closed loop system maintains the the two individual results really beautifully and uh, now we can effectively create sort of any systems we want as long as those original uh, state space equations are controllable and observable this is the fundamental result of state space controls